Okay, we're back for the second time. <laughs> we just had a 15-minute discussion before I realized we weren't live. You I pulled a hair metal covered. Rob. You have to – so here's the deal. So now I understand what happened to Rob that one time. You have to hit the go live button twice. <laughs> if you hit it once, it doesn't go live. So now I got a know. question. I got a question. <laughs> how how much how much uh, how much did you uh, how much crap did you give Rob for doing that though? We still give him crap. <laughs> we, we still give him crap. Hey, well, here's we're, we're, the, here's we're the deal with that it. one though. That was we had we had this drummer from Saxon on, and we went nearly the what half an hour before yeah, we figured it out. <laughs> Not, we had Nigel Glockler on, and uh, all of a sudden we realized we weren't live. But I will tell you a funny story about Gene when we had him on. About a year and a half ago, he forgot to introduce him. <laughs> Rob just went into talking, and we're talking about drums, and Ugh. and and Gene goes, and by the way, I'm Gene Hoagland, and so, <laughs> so there's two items that we continue to give Rob a grief about. So mm. anyway, so Scott, we're gonna have to just, well, you you, well, we'll you learn from the master. You learn mm. from the master. So all right, cool. Again, all right, we're back. We've got two special guests with us. We've got uh, Rob won't be with us today. He's having internet issues, but we have special guest Steve, aka Harmless Rebel, on YouTube, yep. and uh, very special guest up here in the corner. We've got Ron mm -hmm. Reinhardt, and as we described him before, Ron is the vocalist for an Abby, Abba tribute band up in uh, up in, in Arizona now, and uh, he formerly he formerly was a uh, a. Um, a comedian and he used to do imitations of uh people like uh stevie wonder but then he got in trouble for that because because he was doing blackface um so oh, he no longer does that. here we go oh. getting canceled dark <laughs> 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 just got canceled oh. Oh, we we don't even funny. get to finish the interview. That's, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> we want to do our shout outs again just for fun. Yeah sure what you got okay. go ahead go ahead John uh, Okay, well, the whole this whole thing's been off the rails since we started late anyway, but I opted for carpool duty, helping out a friend of mine, Stefra Greenhagen. I love you, baby. Get feel, get to feeling better. The migraine thing is terrible. And to her son, the craftsman himself, Aaron Fink, uh, from Trinity High School. Yes, the Trojans. So anyway, go ahead, Scott. Steve, you got anything? Now let's jump in. Okay, and I just wanted to quickly say that uh, No Light to Metal Records signed Avenger of Blood, so their new album called Completely Reannihilated will be coming out most likely the beginning of January because we're doing vinyl and CD. And the new Vindicator is out and shipping, so if anybody's interested in that, no light to metal records com. There you go. All right, we're oh, doing all that stuff. That almost now sounded rehearsed. It almost sounded rehearsed. <laughs> it was rehearsed. Like it, it was. It was. It was before. Second, we started again the second time. Okay. All right, so now we're going to get into uh, Ron and and his Abba tribute band. Um, so, how long have you been playing in this Abba tribute band? Dark Abba, dark, dark Abba. Dark Abba. <laughs> <laughs> well, dark Abba. You know, it's like ever since my uh, Amish my Amish uh, death metal band kicked me out, I had to go with uh, something like Dark Abba. You know, <laughs> piss the people off I mean, there. You know, wherever you can piss people off at. We started at a weird spot. We actually started talking about Gene Hoagland and and being one of the best thrash metal drummers, just one of the best drummers, period, out there. Yeah, um, and uh, I had mentioned that I thought, you know, you see lists, and of course, everybody says what Dave Lombardo and number one. And I'm not putting down Dave Lombardo at all. I'm just no, saying Gene drummer. should always be in that top list. He's just a phenomenal drummer. So solid, um, solid. Yeah. No argument. Uh, yeah, we had him on the show about uh, almost two years ago, I think yep. it was now that I'm thinking about it, because it was just before I had joined. And uh, yeah, he was he was fun. <laughs> so, um, all right, cool. So you joined Dark Angel. In yeah, about 88, 89. 88, and your first recording was this? Uh, yes, it was. It was, uh, that's we... It's funny. I, I wasn't even in a band for not even a couple of days. And they said, hey, we're going to the Stone in Frisco and we're going to play Fender's Ballroom in Long Beach as warm up shows. And I'm like, wow, because I've been to Fender's Ballroom. I'm like that place is freaking huge. And they're like, oh, that's warm up shows because then we're going to Philly to record um, a live video and album and CD for, um, you know, that and I'm like you're kidding no really and uh, and I'm like you know the first one is like Exodus and 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 they're like yeah yeah we're gonna go do that and I'm like no and like I'm in the band for just a few days and so I have to learn a full list of just songs like I don't know 
pretty much the Dark Angel catalog at this point. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm just like, oh, all right. And so I come from a four, four time heavy metal band, like, you know, just like power chords, you know, uh, your basic uh, chords. So minor, minor adjustment then going yeah, to Dark yeah. Angel. And then it's like, you know, <laughs> you know and it's, just it, and it's just a whole different vocal technique, breathing technique, and you know it's funny. I walk into rehearsal after being in the band for about a week, and Gene, I think it's Gene, asked me the most uh, the question I've never been asked: How many days in a row can you sing? I'm like, I don't really know. How many days in a row have you sing? I'm like. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to hit that number in this band, you know, because when you're in like a club band or a band that plays backyard parties, if you don't have nothing going on, you're just kind of writing songs and, you know, you don't really have a big catalog of songs, you know. So I'm in a band that has albums out already. So we're, you know, we're recording and we're just, we have a ton of stuff to play and learn. And so they're like, yeah, you might need to take vocal lessons to learn how to sing correctly so you could just blast greatest thing i've ever ever about being in dark angel was right from the get-go all of those guys were thinking you know if we're going to have him in the band and he's going to be our singer we're going to need to he's going to need to take care of himself so you know right from the get-go that was one of the main things you know learn a ton of songs make sure you can scream yell hit all that grit and do it for a lengthy period of time yep got to use your abdomen more than your throat Otherwise yeah you're and done. so and so it was like all super quick so you know i was in the band for maybe even i don't know maybe two months and we're in philadelphia and it was like mind-blowing because we're unsupervised psychopaths on a plane back when you could drink and smoke on a plane and I mean, like get like super inebriated on the plane and we're already inebriated at the airport, you know, when we run in the hacksaw Jim Duggan in Chicago. And so like we're day drinking with a pro wrestler. So we we're stoked. Um, yeah. So we get the Philly and it was just from that point, it was just out of control. The whole thing was out of control. That's awesome. And you guys were there. And the thing is on that show, you were also the co-headliners with Raven. So you had a stiff competition up there. Because <laughs> the other bands, the other bands that were opening up the show was what? Uh, Forbidden, Faith or Fear, and Death. Yeah, Death. Death was that was the first time I got to meet uh, um, Rick, uh, Roz, and Terry, and the guys. And uh, Rick was <laughs> he was he was like the he was the back then he was well probably still to this day he was the main party of the guy. But like uh, Terry and Rick and still and I still keep in contact. Well, a lot of us, but. Uh, um, yeah, that was, we went and actually, you know, because when you do something like that, you don't get a lot of sleep. We probably could have gotten sleep, but we, like I said, unsupervised youngsters um, in Philadelphia. So up all night was kind of the theme, um, you know, drinking heavily was pretty much everything out of our hotel window that was pretty much high, you know, because we we're figuring like, oh, wow, things float when you're up this high. Um, let's see how long it takes or how many beers we could chug before it hits the ground. And um, yeah, so there was a lot of that going on and sleeping on here with nothing, just nothing in your hotel room, but you're pretty much your mattress mm -hmm. at that <laughs> point because everything else has been out the window. So the next day when it's time to perform, you're just like, you get there, you miss you pretty much get there to see you see the band before you because you're just like, oh, so that performance, all of us, except for maybe Hoagland was uh, pretty much hung over. He was pretty much the only guy that was like, I'm going to be responsible. And, you know, <laughs> and to my due diligence and the rest of us were just. Well, it sounded good. So you guys did all right. Oh, we were, yeah, we were, I was going to say, I couldn't tell that, that you guys were were blasted on that that was a killer recording oh, well, actually. once you you know i think eddie guerrero said it best um you know pro wrestler you know once you walk through that magic curtain he called it the magic curtain you know you hear the audience and you just no matter how bad you feel same thing 
it's like now I'm in my 50s. I'm 57, and I've been busted up pretty bad because I have stupid, ridiculous hobbies that just tear my body up like a meat grinder. But it's like the minute, you know, we're all doing our, our traditional, you know, handshake and, you know, good show thing backstage, and we're all, you know, loving on each other, and we're here in the crowd, and then you hear Gene do the... You know, and it's like you feel that in your chest, you know, and you're ready. You're just like, oh, you know, you're just getting pumped up. It's like all those aches and pains I feel. I know I'm going to feel them after the show, but right there in that moment, I don't feel nothing but like, oh, like just that, just adrenaline buzz. If they could bottle that some way, somehow. And like those mornings, I can't, I can't get out of bed because my, you know, shoulder just doesn't move or my neck just feels like, oh, I would just be like, oh, yeah, there we go. I'm up moving now. You know, you know what it's like. It's just it's just nothing beats it. And, you know. Yep. Then there it's the, the, the adrenaline rush on stage. You, you feed off the energy of the crowd and, and the crowd feeds off of your energy as well. So yeah. I've the prouder you get, the prouder they get. Yeah, I've had migraines, I've had hangovers, I've, you know, had uh, recoup from surgeries, broken bones. You know, you hear that roar of the crowd and you're like, oh man, it's like, I don't give a crap. I'd have to be, have blood shooting out of my neck to miss this at this point, you know, and I'll walk out there drop dead. But and I'm if the blood dead. was shooting out of your neck, that would be actually a cool effect and that would right? draw draw more people in probably. Well, look, at, yeah. look at Richie Faulkner. He had a heart attack on stage and finished his, finished the song before he walked off. And he sure incredible. did. Right? Uh, that is, that's yeah, insanity. You know, you know, it's just there's sometimes there's, you just you just feel it, you know. So, so you replaced uh, a, another singer in the band who we don't have to go into any of that because it's who cares? Um, but your next, the next album was, well, after this one, right? This was the album you didn't sing on. Yeah. And then it was what? Uh, uh, leave scars. Leave scars. scars. Yeah. Hang on, I got it right here. There it is. I've got mine in a frame because somebody scribbled all over my cover. So that guy's a dick. Why'd you let him scribble? Oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. oh, <you're> a douchebag. <laughs> so, um, so tell us a little bit about the the first album you recorded with them and 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 how that went and it was actually it was it was like i said when we got when i got in the band it was like we got busy i mean they were they were on hiatus for a while looking for not only a singer but just looking for somebody to like i didn't audition for the band i pretty much tried out like i just came down and had like talked to the guys like we're doing now i like i just hung out and they're like okay well we all agree we like you um so tomorrow come and we already know what you can sing so tomorrow come and learn a couple songs and let's bust out some songs because they had seen my band before so right when i got in the band it was like go time you know i had to learn a bunch of songs played some shows went and did the ultimate revenge um we were already um learning new material the promise of agony uh, you know, older in time itself, damn, that song was just the biggest pain in my butt to learn because it had that uh, transition section at the end that give it to me, take it from me, all that part. I was just like, oh, my God, I would love to do that song live now because at that point, you know, I was not only learning new styles and learning like the catalog. So the catalog of Dark Angel was different vocal styles, too. You know, so I was learning just so much different stuff. But this is also my first time in a professional recording studio. So I didn't know anything about making a recording schedule or anything about how I wanted to record the songs. I just know I wanted to bust them out. I didn't know anything. That's why there's a big difference on my vocals on Time Does Not Heal and that. If I was going to record Time Does Not Heal Aggressive, I would have still approached it the same way and had like the tracking like I wanted to, like... Um, like I'm going to have in the future because I just have that mentality mentality now that I learned so much. Like my first song I did was uh, Death of Innocence because I just, I feel like I wanted to take the hardest song that I thought on the album was and just knock it out because I put so much effort into just learning that song. And my band never even heard any of that song from this point other than it being monotone. Because I just had to do those lyrics and repetition so much that it was just, 
my band only heard live up until this point me just talking those lyrics like my mouth, my is only accepted by society. My life is rolled over a cigarette of a beer deed in this day and age stream of affection. So they only heard that for like the last three months. So I thought, man, you know, whoever's in the studio day one is going to hear me just rip through this song because I just, that's the song. And it was Gene and Durkin and I think maybe Meyer and I think maybe the whole band. I don't know. I know it's Jim and Gene for sure. And I told them, roll up death of innocence and gene was just like oh my goodness yeah that's exactly that's exactly what i want right there dude that's exactly what i picture just that's yeah just keep doing that he's like i didn't even think because i was just kind of reading it in my head the whole time because there's so many lyrics and it was just so fast and the the funny thing is is now i've never looked at those lyrics ever again so we took all that hiatus and we came back that's the one song i've never rehearsed it's just like we could do that song in a drop of a hat tomorrow, and it's like I can I just have it. I just never forgot those words ever. It's just weird. Ingrained in your brain. Oh, yeah, because that was like the heart to me. The hardest song just to get down was that kind of cadence of that song, how it just starts. And so I just would monotone that for like three months at rehearsal, that and the promise of agony. And so the promise of agony is is another one that I very rarely study. It's like that one, I just have to study. I have to rehearse just to get the diaphragm issues down on that one because, you know, I don't know if Gene thinks I'm Superman or whatnot, that I don't need to breathe air. But he's just like, puts like, yeah, Ron, yeah, you don't need air. He's just like, yeah, just forever, bro. So speaking of, of lyrics and recollection and all that type of thing, do you do you contribute to that or is it all a Gene thing? I need. I mean, I know on Darkness Descends, he pretty much just did everything, right? On um, darkness, uh, I don't, I don't know what the remember all the credits on darkness on um, on leave scars. Gene wrote, I believe that album was pretty much finished except for um, the one Jim and I did, um, never to rise again. And then on time does not heal, there was a few things that Gene and I had collaborated on a little bit. And then on this album, we're just going to be bouncing ideas back and forth. To me, it's like whatever, like I was talking to Gene the other day, and I was told him, you know, like there's some things I have ideas for that I can't put into concisive, like uh, good, uh, like I'll have a vocal line or an idea, and I can't get it down to where I want it to be, like that cut, that cut or that nice uh, line to. And so what I'll do is like what I did last week is just run it by Gene. Gene, here's my idea. Here's what I have. Here's the thing. He's like, oh, dude, I like that. I like this idea. And he'll start jotting down things. And so for us, whatever best works out for the song, I don't even care about how the credits roll out on it. At the end of the day, if I like, like Pain's Invention Madness, Pretty much my favorite song on Time Does Not Heal. It's one song I didn't even add anything to whatsoever. And when I when she gave it to me, he's like, yeah, dude, do whatever you want to this. And it was just like, hardest song on that album, song that I hate to freaking just belt because it's like seven and a half minutes. It's like seven minutes of vocals. But it's my favorite song. You know, it's just so much of just, ah, oh, that I have to Rapid fire, out. rapid fire, yeah. Yeah, and it's just... You know, and I, if I I could write a song like that, to me the vocals are just bitching on that song. Does I Gene just, play guitar? Oh, Gene plays almost everything. Okay, I was gonna know? say so he writes with the guitar then, and then and then plays it for you guys, or how do you guys? Uh, I don't, do I don't you? know, I don't know how the music's written because oh. I don't have the patience to stick around and hang out with those <laughs> freaking musician idiots. No, that's <laughs> like I'm not. You know, I'm the person that uh, hangs out with musicians. I'm the singer. Yeah, that's uh, the way it was for me too. I go to I go to practices and be and, and they'd be writing songs and I call that uh, musical Tourette's because they're just doing all kinds of crap and I'm just sitting there like, you guys done yet? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's yeah. it's like they'll like sit there, like uh, we're getting ready for a show and they're they're talking. We'll just say like Portuguese, yada 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 yada. And from here and I like look at Gene. I'm like. Huh? He's like, oh yeah, 
this doesn't include you. We're going to take it from. <laughs> and then they all start speaking this again. And then like, you know, they look at each other from this part. Yeah, yeah. And then they're all, ch -ch -ch, and they all come in. I'm like, oh, yeah. And they work on this one whole part. And then they stop. I'm like, oh, yeah, it has nothing to do with me. But they're all like talking in minors and majors and blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, whatever. I have no idea what you guys are. You know, it could be another language for all I can see. Nice. Joe's Garage. Joe's Garage. There, That brings back some recollection, right? Right. Yeah. So we do have quite a few people watching and commenting. Um, if, if any of you guys watching want to ask a question, ask it and I'll put it up. So um, right now we're, at, we're we're kind of, this is where we're at, right? Time does not heal is where we're kind of leaving off on. The the album with 240, remember that sticker used to be on here? 246 riffs or something like that? I have that poster. I have that poster yeah. in, my, in, where I were, in my uh, studio where I rehearse at my house. It's definitely probably one of the more, the fastest, most progressive thrash metal albums out there, in my opinion. Thanks, man. And then you guys toured for that album forever, if I recall correctly, right? Um, we only did, um, we toured a lot for Scars. We were going to tour a lot for Time Does Not Heal, um, but we toured in, I think only, I don't think we toured the States on that. We toured just like Europe and whatnot. I don't think we did the big States tour that we had wanted to do for that. I'm going to be the uh, consummate professional and... and, and disappear for one second so i was gonna say i was about ready to grab something off the shelf and i was wondering about so w w with that tour you recorded live scars after leave scars or yep. was there an, was there another album we, I, we did right after leave scars well during that tour um during leave scars tour they did this uh giveaway um they did one of those uh i think it was westwood one i oh. remember westwood one used to do yeah. all those live oh, yeah. concerts westwood one yeah. it did everything before we had the internet um everywhere um you'd always you'd always hear your 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 album your favorite bands live on westwood one you know right. yep. and so um we did a westwood one recording and it was uh they gave away back then there was no cds um i mean dvds they gave away uh the ultimate revenge 2. um it was before chuck had left the tour um so death dropped out of it so it was supposed to be us and death still the ultimate revenge 2 tour and uh so they're giving away cds um um because uh vhs um actually uh vhs players in the vhs and albums like a little packet to like uh con contestants and stuff and then we were the, the live concert was going out you know uh via Westwood one. And so we had got a hold of that recording and we're like, wow, this is, this is really good. And so people are like, oh, do you want to go on and track? And we're like, no, we right away. We're like, that's not, that's not live to us. That to it kind of taints the, the live uh, vibe. Cause we thought, man, this comes across cool. You know how it's, you know, agony a lot of just a, it really was we really liked the way it came out so we released it like it was that we i do some words and all. pardon that's why we say i have words and all yeah yeah and, and that's a fantastic recording yeah because we we didn't track or no there's no additional nothing on there at all whatsoever that's they awesome. got this they got this cool picture of you on the front where someone had just kicked you in the nuts. <laughs> That's my trademark. Judy hates when I do it because I'll send pictures home to this day. Like I'll do a selfie and I'll be like in front of this bitch in looking church and like someplace and I'll be like. And she's like, can you please, please send me one picture with your mouth shut or smiling or, you know, just anything other than the. And I'm like, That's my like, that's my smile. <laughs> that's your signature move. Yeah, that's like that's like I, you know, I can't stand my smile, so I just always like. So at, after the uh, it was was that nineteen ninety ninety one or so tour? Actually, what I went to grab was this. Oh, nice! The uh, Dark Angel ninety one tour shirt. Yeah. Wonder where, where I got that from. The Year of Bread. <laughs> yep. Wonder where I got that from. Anyhow. Um, so after after that tour, though, the band kind of broke up, I guess, went to hiatus. What mm -hmm. happened? I mean, I know you you were the one who left first, right? It was all me. Um, it, it's just, you know, there was just a lot of 
just the music, the, I think the whole music industry at the time, you know, for, for me personally, I don't know where the band was, but it was just the music industry at the time there. It was just a lot of things, you know, and it was our label. You know, we got in this big old just brawl with our label, so to speak, for just being douchebags. And it was just combat, right? Yeah, it was just it was just making me not I wasn't just liking music at that time. You know, and I got into this because I was a fan, you know, like now I still am a fan of music. There's yeah. so many bands that I just, I like the band. I can't even name a song, but I can like hum everything that they play. You know, it's like, I used to love doing that. You know, it's like we we're talking, I was talking with Eric because um, we just played with creator at this at motor culture in France. And I told him, Hey man, I didn't, did you go over and talk to the creator boys at all? And he goes, Oh man, I missed it. And he goes, dang dude. And me and Millie, we used to, uh, mail each other back in the day you know because they're you know people unless you're our age don't for they forget that there wasn't always an internet there wasn't always right. you, you know back in the day there was tape trading and pen pals and you would have yeah. to actually write and you would and when you dug something that you found at like middle earth or zed records or something you would have to like look on the back at the p.o box or if they didn't have a number, you would have to actually write those freaking people and say, hey, I dig your stuff. And once in a while, they would write you back or they would send you a little crappy sticker that was folded up. What's up, Rob? And, uh, you know, and they would send that back to you and you'd be stoked. So he's telling the story of how him and Millie, that Millie sent him a creator shirt and he sent him a Darkness Descent shirt. And I'm like, dude. You know, I told Millie has a good memory for that because I was in the band for, this is like, right after we just recorded Leaf Scars, but it was before we started touring. So Leaf Scars is not out yet. You know, that three, that couple of months after recording when they're, you know, it's, they're making all the, you know, pressings and all that. So we go to this bitch and party and it's at uh, DRI's management's house or somebody, I don't know. And uh, we're just holy soldiers there. I mean, not holy soldier, a uh, holy terror, a uh, DRI creator, all of us show up. It's like, it's just super, super fun. And I meet Millie for the first time. And so we're in Japan talking about this and he's like, what a great memory. And I'm like, dude, that was so fun. He's like, dude. And so I told Eric, I go, you should have went and just reminded him of that. He would have, he would have got a kick because we played with creator a few times. And every time those guys are just flawless. It's just ridiculous to, to see them play. Yeah, I've yeah. seen them play a few times, and they're just, they always destroy whatever place they play in. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. it's its just sick. And and Sam, just all those dudes, Sam, all those dudes, Sammy, everyone in that band is really cool. They're super cool to be around. So, yeah. So after you left Dark Angel, um, the band kind of broke up for a while, and you started, a, you, you actually did some recording with some of the Dark Angel guys, though, right? That never um, made it to any kind of. Yeah, me and Eric, me and Eric, um, we just because, you know, I like I said, I was a fan and I just, you know, Eric's like, I'm bored. Do you want to just play some music and make some demos? And we're like, yeah, sure. You know, we didn't even plan on touring with that. And uh, we recorded a demo with the guy, Ross Stein, really super nice guy, um, Hunger, and made a demo. And then... I don't know why that. I think we start having drummer issues with that project. And, uh, you know. They're not drummers. Yeah. They're all the same. Yeah. And so then after that, um, I'm just like, ah, I'm just going to play uh, mountain bike and skate. You know, I was just like, I'm just going to mountain bike, skate, and goof off. And that's when I got into oil, which was at the time called Once Dead. So is uh, is there anything else from Oil or just the one album or uh, are, they, are they still around or are they, I mean. We have three. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I've looked, I, I honestly say I've looked for 20 years for any Oil and I can never find it. So well, this was the, this was their full length uh, album. This came out after the EP, which okay. is the EP. The EP is my right. favorite. It's a five song EP. And then this was kind of a, a live album with some new stuff on it as well yeah uh, and then and then some acoustics 
acoustic stuff as well. So yeah. that's the only one that I still see from time to time is the the last one there. The chopping block. Yeah. Yeah. Voice yeah. cuts. Yeah. yeah. That I was a dark angel a line, actually. Chopping blocks a dark angel, a dark angel line that we uh, we have borrowed because we always say anytime you make a mistake, throw it on the chopping block or who's next for the chopping block. So that was like the little O to Dark Angel. For my, uh, and that's and that's how you and I met was when you were in oil. It was yep. in the had to be early 90s, right? Mid 90s, maybe 96 or so. 90, Something like that. 96. Yeah. 97. And uh, Ultimatum went out to do a show in California and we were uh, playing with you guys in East West and some, oh, some rap. That's a weird mix. <laughs> yeah, there was some other band too. I can't remember the other one, but yeah, it was East West was went on, then it was Ultimatum, and then and then Oil went on. And while we were kind of goofing around before the show, I went in and I talked to Ron and introduced myself and whatnot. And I'm like, "Hey, dude, you mind coming to my car for a second? I got to show you something." And I we walked out to the car and I I, 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 brought, I, I cracked this up and I said, "You mind signing my CD?" <laughs> I'm not I'm not ashamed. <laughs> And I was like so a anyhow. total. I was a total jerk to him. I was like, "Oh, dude, get get away! I don't even like you." Long hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. He was all long hair, long hair hippie freak. Yeah, yeah, sure was. I had no hair. Kind of a long hair hippie. Well, I yeah, it's just, it it's just falling out now. But <laughs> mine's so, just, but in any case, mine's gray. Mine's gray, and then it'll only grow on the sides. Now yep. the top won't grow no more. It'll grow like maybe this long, so it'll grow out here. So I could have like a three mohawk, like uh, like a crusty either <laughs> crown clown. You I know? could definitely do that. That's the only thing that grows is the sides. So yeah. <laughs> you got so Fraser Dawn. About- y'all, y'all, y'all played here in Houston. I came over with a long time ago. I can't remember who y'all played with. That would just. We just played uh, Hell's Heroes too. Uh, maybe oh yeah, four four or five months ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I love I love playing Texas, man. Well, yeah. come on down. You, you no play, doubt. I'm hoping they play. If you play, if you play, play Texas again, I'm going to get got, there. Host you plenty of live events. So talk yeah. about the new record. I mean, we keep hearing rumors of a new Dark Angel album, and so we're all chomping at the bit, waiting to, oh, dude, it's, to hear it. I, like I told, uh, like us, me and my wife were talking about it, because, you know, she's like uh, that poor thing. She she is a she should get a trophy. She is a trophy wife because she has to hear all of my uh, good, bad, and ugly. But uh, you know, because she's like, so what's it sound like? What what three <laughs> oil albums? I just have one. Oh, so you got to hook Fraser up. To let him know what three oil albums are. And I'm so I, right now, Good. I play her. I play her the riffs and stuff. And so I tell her, you know, this, this, this. And so she's like, ah. Oh. And so uh, it's uh, super stoked, but it's definitely not fast, um, a fast enough process for me because, you know, it's um, the hurry up and wait game, which my managers probably, uh, probably um, feels how my wife feels is like, God, why do I have to put up with this dick all the time? But so, uh, you know. So, are, who are the players? Is it I mean, obviously it's you and Gene? But uh, are the other guys the same as as uh, previously, or yes. new blood? Or oh, so it's basically yeah. the original what Leaf Scars lineup? Yes. So Eric's there. Pardon? Awesome. Yes, Eric Eric Meyer and uh, Jim oh. Durkin are both there, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then uh, um, Mike Gonzalez on bass. I was going to leave that for you, Scott, because you're the Dark Angel fan. I was going to say, man, he better not forget Gons. It's like lives in New Mexico. <laughs> Does he still live here? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Where, what, where's he at? Farmington? No, uh, um, yeah. Alamogordo. Oh, Alamogordo. Cool. Right on. So um, you got back. Why don't you tell us how the, how the whole thing get, getting back together? I know you guys recorded um, a, a song called a Metallica song for a tribute album a few years ago. That was a that was a long a long time. Uh, that was uh, I can't remember when. Two thousand seven. Long... So I don't know. I'd have to look, but uh, I get. I'll find out. Go ahead and talk. We we, uh, we uh you know th- we've always been in constant contact with the, each other, no matter what project Gene's been doing, or no matter you know what 
you know, where um, Gons has lived or where I have been, we've all, you know, still have been friends, you know. So um, we start, you know, the Internet started getting bigger, you know, and Facebook and took over for MySpace and all that crap. So pictures of us, you know, all of us start having Facebook and all that. Pictures of us start floating around together. And um, people are like, oh, what is this? Oh, what is this? And then we start seeing, uh, um, I think it was Get Dark Angel Back on Stage website. And then a, there was a Dark Angel tribute website. Um, and some of these may be uh, um, sporadic. Uh, the way I talk is like, I don't get the um, specifics correct. So I'll put that disclaimer out there. So around 2012, we're all talking and like, oh, you know, people are saying we should play again. And we're like kind of, you know. Jim and Eric and Gene and, you know, every time we talk, we're like, oh, you know, it would be nice, but this time we can't screw it up because we've done this in the past and somebody in the band gets super hurt <laughs> and screws it up. Not that it's intentional, but apparently that guy is very irresponsible and does stupid shit all the time. I'm not going to say who it is, but, you know, you guys might know him. <laughs> and so when the band's like, we shouldn't screw this up this time, they're like saying like, somebody in the band shouldn't mess this up. Like, so I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, maybe I should not do wheelies or jump stuff or, you know, play hockey or anything if we're going to drop refrigerators on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Tumble downstairs backwards with a refrigerator, you know, stuff like yep. that, you know, fun things, fun things. And yep. um, so we're just going back and forth. And um, then somebody else, not to be mentioned, comes in and says, hey, man, uh, I'm going to start playing festivals with my my band. And we're all like, huh? It's like, so we were just like, oh, yeah, you know, we're talking about it. And so, you know, we just start getting offers. And we're like, oh, it's all feasible. And, you know, we it's not like there was nothing for us to really work on because we always were in contact with each other. So we're like, ah. Oh. What songs do you know? Ah, oh, what songs do you know? So we start just building like a kind of a, like a set of like, oh yeah, this will be, you know, because it's not like we have an easy song or a warm up song or hey, what songs like cuddly or fuzzy that we would be easy to like cruise on into this? It's like, well, sh crap, we'll just warm up with, you know, that's a certain uh, perishing flames and let's see if this like works and yeah, ease into it like that. Yeah, you know, flame. yeah, and if none of us crap out or prostate, then we'll just like rehearse the next day. Yeah, you know? there you go. <laughs> you know, and because Gene was Gene was already good to go because you know he was playing for everybody and their mother. So and he's like we talked at the beginning that when we weren't live, for all you who missed it when we thought we were. You know, the, he's like a dynamo. He can just walk in and do it. You can tell him, you know, how many songs you know on drums? Well, on drums, I don't know, maybe 300, you know, I mean, and I'm just making up a number. He probably knows maybe more. I don't know. But, you know, it's like, so he, you know, I, none of us had a concern with him. All of our concerns were just with ourselves. Like, ah, I just worry about myself. That's what I love about Dark Angel. You know, you know. How hard is it to schedule around somebody like Gene, who's usually playing with two or three bands and recording with three or four bands? And well, it got a lot easier. Um, you know, he's, you know, the it's the pandemic, the the, oh, yeah. the pandemic, or however you want to say it, uh, made, made it easy, made it easier. <laughs> um, but uh, in the beginning, that's why we were having a lot of issues. You know, it's like not a lot of issues, but you know, it's like, oh, what happened? Did I just get out of here? Okay, no, you're there. good. No, you're good. Um, good. My, uh, um, you know, it's just, you know, when you got a ton of things on your plate, he's he's starting to get a little bit more freed up, and that's why we're getting, making a lot more progress. Yeah, I think it. Not, not to fanboy him too much because he's been on the show and I've met him a couple of times, but I, I saw him on the Gigantour. I want to say it's 2007 uh, with uh, Megadeth and Arch Enemy and Overkill did a couple of shows sporadically. And he sat in with Opeth of all bands and he was just as fluid in Opeth, which is a little more dynamic and, and progressive 
than say Dark Angel or Anthrax or uh, Testament or name a million bands that, like you said, he's played for. But so, it, yeah, to his, to your point, he is he's already re re uh, cocked and loaded, ready to go. Oh, yeah. um, but vocally, are you ready to go? I mean, because I have a feeling that this is going to be one of those springboards into something where you're going to need to hit the road. And how many days can you sing in a row like you mentioned before? <laughs> I'll give you I'll let you I'll let you in on uh, on a secret because I, I, I don't think a lot of people understand now what what it is that that are just how I approach anything. So and this is our poor manager, Rob Shellcross, that what he has to deal with, because he has to deal with me. And people think Ron's probably the nicest guy. I'm the biggest dick. I just am. Sorry to, <laughs> to just just blow lang blow up language on your show. I apologize. All right. Any, any listener I offend, I apologize. Um, but I am. Um, because um, if I have to train for one show or 30, it's the same. I put the same into it. Cause I, I'm 57 now. And it's Dark Angel songs. I'm not going to mention the three or four bands that I take my I've taken my wife to and watch them do a two and a half hour set. And I love those bands, right? I really do. I'm a huge fan. That's why I'm not mentioning their names. Even if I wasn't a fan, I wouldn't mention their names. But I walked out pissed, thinking I play 40 minutes and I do 35 percent more vocals than this band just did a two hour set and people are like, man, they did two hours. They did two hours and 20 minutes. That poor singer, Mike, that guy couldn't do 40 minutes in a, in not only just my band, but death angel or X, you know, be bands that just have a lot of vocals, you know? So the way I approach it now is I start three months before a show and I start like training like a fighter at the beginning. I start maybe twice to three times a week and then I get four times a week and then I'm going five times a week and I'm doing it hard. I'm going like with a big warm up to where I warm up my soft palate first and then I'll hit like some type of operatic type of vocals and I'll do the entire set. Not like I don't half it. I do it like I'm doing it live with every scream, every hold it out, like um, Death of Innocence, I always hold that scream out at the end to where the, till I'm doing it past the music. So I will hold all of those like I do, try to hold them as long as I can, like I'm doing live, cause that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And then I'll do those five days a week and then I'll split my off days and then I'll run it like that. And I try to do it as much as I can because I look at it this way. My audience is an audience of one. And then it's not only that, it's um, everybody who's ever just went to bat for all the stupidity that I've done and should have been out. Like my band's put up with so much of my crap. And it's like, I just can't. If I drop the ball because of human error, I'm totally cool with it. But if I drop the ball because I'm not prepared, it's like, I just can't. I just can't be that guy. Okay, so the twenty thousand dollar question is: is what day are you on, and how many days a week are you practicing? Because I'm trying to add up the. Let's see, when will they maybe be on the road so we can see them play live? Because <laughs> if you're doing four or five times a week, then we already know that that uh, impact is imminent, so to speak, and you're about ready to hit the road, or you're about ready so, to record. So the twenty thousand dollar question is: <laughs> You're not giving me an answer. Okay, fair enough. Fair Honesty enough. is the best policy. I like it. Well, because you know, I I don't I don't want to sidestep and I don't want to lie. Of course, no, understood. We'll just keep tracking you so we can hear it for ourselves. There you go. You guys just played a, a few shows in Europe, right? Not too long ago. Yep. Motoculture and uh, then the, the last Metal Meon Festival in Belgium, then the, that was the final one. Mm. And I was super stoked to be a part of the last one. And do, don't you have, do you guys have, I, I thought I saw online, you guys are playing Australia? Is that still happening? I didn't, I don't look online. I didn't know we're playing Australia, but if we are, <laughs> I'm super stoked. Yeah, big announcement. Yeah. <laughs> so I, when did you see that? 
Max Watts in Melbourne. It says it's coming up. I don't know. When? That's awesome. Sweet. I can't wait. Oh, no, it's that's past. Did you guys play Australia already? Yeah, in 2019. Oh, that's that's weird. It's got it in the list of concerts for coming up. Dude, you just made my heart be I'm like, <laughs> we're going back to Australia? I was gonna they like, tell me? Yeah. I'm like, oh, by, the, here, Mike. by the way, the the, uh, the tribute album you guys recorded on was back in 2004. I did look that up. Oh, nice. So it was quite I saw a while somebody ago. that had a question, but I didn't catch it. It just said, who are you? And then that. Oh, there you go. Away. Oh, sweet. My influences. Oh, my goodness. So I'm old, not not super old, but uh, I'm super um, old, Ron. So go when, right ahead. When okay. I was in, when I was in, um, when I was, there was a few people that made me want to start singing, and that was gonna be. Um, it sounds crazy, but it was uh, Ronnie James Dio and um, um, Paul Diano. Because when I first heard Iron Maiden, they didn't have Bruce Dickinson in the band. I love Bruce Dickinson, but uh, a guy named Dwayne, I can't think of his last name. I was always, already a fan of Dio, and I loved just a lot of – I was just getting into just the heavier side of music. So I was like a Zeppelin fan at the time, loved like Zeppelin, Sabbath, and uh, Rainbow, and – um he brought made in Japan to school. And I was like, what's that? And I heard down and it's like, Ooh, I don't want to play guitar. I don't want to play drums. I don't want to play. I want to be a singer. And I was like, after I heard that, I was like that just, and then um, got into the priest and all that. And so, uh, so um, then I became a fan of Halford. So it would be those three that got me into wanting to be the full fledged vocalist. And then it was after a time and then, you know, after a time, then Dickinson took over and then of course he became an influence, but it was like my first three were Diano, um, Dio and, uh, um, Halford. Oh, of course I, I like deep purple just, yeah, deep purple. Yeah, me too. Just, but there's yeah. no, there's no there's no beating uh, Ian Gill and the guy is just. He's he's a. Uh, I'm trying to think of a nice word what, way way to say it, but it, he's like a god when it comes to singers. And still singing. And, still and he's still doing it. And yeah. still, still doing it. Fancy. Well, even uh, well, uh, we just saw um, Priest what a couple months ago, and he's about to turn seventy Thanks, or man. he just turned seventy, and he still sounds amazing. Dude, it pipes for days, pipes for days. If I could, yeah. if I could have a, if if I could have just that type of uh, resonance, that's why I train so hard now when it comes to singing because I think it's, you know, a lot of times if you just keep your throat open, you keep that diaphragm and all that and that push. It's like some singers I think figured it out and they just have it. Like I seen Halford, I seen Priest a couple of years ago, not long ago. And Halford was still just belting it. And, you know, it's like he was he was having troubles uh, getting around. You could tell because of that back surgery. But my wife hit the nail on the head. She's like, you can just any any period or era of priest. He's just nailing. She's like picture perfect. I'm like, it just it. You could just like it's just like, oh, it is. It was amazing. Yeah, I agree. Gillen was one of Bruce Dickinson's heroes. Cool. So, uh, so, so Dark Angel kind of reformed it three or four times in the 2000s, but now you've been pretty solid since about what, 2013? 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah, and you guys, yeah, so you've been, and you do, but you've not recorded anything new, but you're working on something new. At least that's the rumor. <laughs> well, he's not going to say now because he, I've already asked the question, but. Yeah, I mean, you it's, better believe, I mean, you better believe we'll be looking for it. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. Looking forward to looking. I'd love to hear something new. So, well, you know, oh, we're, we're definitely we're definitely working on it. But uh, you know, as for my rehearsal days, it's like you know, I'm I'm on I'm on a you know, I'm on a pretty good regiment. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. 
Oh, um, Pretty one good. more thing. Let's see. Hmm. One more okay. thing before we go. Um, what can you tell us? Give us a Spinal Tap story. <laughs> a Spinal. Well, I don't have. Uh, I don't. I don't know what you mean by Spinal Tap story, but I got a lot of uh, good stories. Here's one where we broke into Disney World. Is that a good Spinal Tap story? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Okay, so everybody knows the thing that you do if you want to go into the drive-in, right? And you don't want to pay. You just put the wood over the little spiky things and you drive over the exit, right? That's like a common sense. Everybody growing up in the hood or grew up poor does that. You put the wood over the little spikes and you drive through the exit and you drive right over the spikes, you know? Cause you know what I'm talking about? Yep, of course. So so we do that because... Yeah, so we go to Disney World because uh, we're supposed to pick up Brett Erickson and Gene Hoagland. And we are we got, well, this is going to go down a really bad way and make me look bad, but I'm not all that bad. So we um, get super hammered. We're in Florida. Well, yeah, well, you know where Disney World is. So <laughs> we get super hammered at this, uh, miniature, this uh, miniature golf and go-kart place so bad to where they're trying to get our sound man to stop and the guy gets johnny i'm not going to say your last name out of love for you they try to go out there on the thing and he plows one of the kids that works there and he's holding on he's like sir just stop sir just stop so we leave there to go to disney world and they're closed so we do the wood over the thing and we drive into the exit and Eric Gons, Sean, myself, I believe Uncle Danny. Um, I think I'm missing somebody. If I am, please, if anybody sees this that I miss, please correct me. Um, we start dispersing and we start going in. So we're now back by Epcot Center. And I got my trusty skateboard that I got from Walt Drews, my Bones Peralta board. And I'm skating around slowly. And they're walking, taking pictures of their butts and stuff by Epcot Center, and, you know, because that's what we did in Dark Angel, BAs and nut shots, all that stuff. And uh, I hear them. They get up ahead of me because I found this little sweet berm that I could just go up and down on my skateboard on. And I hear, hey, you, you guys hold it. And they're like, go, go, go. So I come down and I'm tucking in and I'm turning and I'm security guards are chasing me and I'm laughing my butt off and I look up and I see like dopey or grumpy, you know, they got the trams painted with the little dwarfs on them for the seven dwarfs. <laughs> wham. I come around this corner. Wham. I hit that thing as hard as can be. And I'm like laid out and they're like flash flashlight in the face. What are you doing? I'm like skating. Where's my board. So they get my board, they handcuff me and I'm sitting on the curb and I have, we have expedited the perpetrator to the front gate. I'm like, where's my friends? And then they're like, we have the other people in jail. I'm like, they're in Disney jail. There's a freaking jail here. Are you kidding me? There's a jail. And so then about an hour goes by, you know, I'm on the curb with cuffs on. They got Disney police actually says Disney police and all that. And so they up there and I was like, what the hell? Sean comes out. I'm like, Sean, what's up, dude? And, freaking everybody we all get back together and they're laughing making jokes and whatnot and they're like they have a distillery bro he's like they had all this disney alcohol and they wouldn't give us any and so they get us out and they're like give us all our ids back and they're like you guys gotta leave you're no longer allowed to come here please don't come back just just don't come to disneyland we're like <laughs> so have you gone oh. back since I've never been to Disney World since, but shocking, yeah. shocking revelation. They didn't like me. Didn't like my skateboard. Didn't like my guitar player. My bass player didn't like. Didn't like you the first time. Probably won't like you the next. Yeah, yeah. that's all I'm thinking. I was, what I, what I meant by uh, when your story was fine, but what I was what I what I meant by was you know those kind of stupid things that bands do. Like one of my bands played in an Indian reservation one time, and we were supposed to be the headliners, and there was three or four bands opening for us. We get to this Indian reservation, and it's just this huge you know field with this old dilapidated building in the background, and they had two two trailers set up as a, as a 
for a stage, which is fine. And we get up there and the, all these bands are playing and because it's going to be, there's going to be professional lighting coming. I'm like, all right, cool. Where's the lighting at? Where's the lighting at? So we're supposed to be last. We're playing in the dark. The other bands are playing during the day. So it, it's getting closer and closer. And I'm like, where's the lighting at? They don't have to worry. It'll be here. So we start, you know, it, it's getting dark now. We're setting up our equipment. I'm like, there's no lights, man. We're going to play in the dark. All of a sudden, all these Native American guys come with their pickup trucks and surround the stage and turn their headlights on. <laughs> that was that was the that was the professional lighting. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, I don't anyhow. I don't know. I'd have to think to see if we have uh because I mean we have some uh crazy fun stuff, but like a lot of that stuff, I you know, usually by the time I'm out there, our crew is just so amazing it's like jeff bruce and ky and those guys they are just all uh i don't i don't see those issues once in a blue moon you know like i'll hand i handed uh something to somebody one time and they're like what's this and i explained it to them what it was and they gave me this look i'm like yeah i don't know who that guy is over there but i i gave him my like uh in ears and my wireless and he like gave me a look of confusion i'm like is that like one of the um, like stagehands or something? They're like, no, that's like the house monitor guy. I'm like, oh, I'm like, watch that guy really good. It's like he looked confused. It's like that ain't like a like a nuclear, uh, you know. It's like you know, it's like something everybody uses nowadays. You know, it's like I'm mm. so hard of hearing. I have to use these. You know, I tried to use this speaker. I got on YouTube and played something. I had this computer all the way up, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> well right on so we're right at an hour so uh we're gonna have to uh get this cut off but ron we really appreciate you coming on thanks oh, for sharing time, man. So much time. um i don't i don't I, I don't talk much about it but ron is my bro i mean he, he's oh, one yeah. of those guys that I, he's one of those guys i go to when i really need some someone to chat with so uh anyhow i just wanted to to say that so uh we right always back, exit the same gone. way right well we always i exit think i mean we have for a couple of years now, but if you want to change it up, maybe what the it's heck, awesome. man? Go ahead, John. Do the uh, do the exit, and then I'll figure out how to run the intro at the end. Oh, so. I we we always say metal will prevail, and then we then Scott usually like leaves us hanging because we're all like posing for the camera, <laughs> and it's supposed to end immediately, and it never does. And now it's become a shtick, just like I wore an easy shirt to wear or to or to, to read. Normally, it's like a pile of sticks. Shirt. And, oh wait, and, we did, and, and you know what? We didn't even mention Osric tentacles today. So <laughs> oh, we just did. Uh, <laughs> bingo. What, we just we, did. what has to be mentioned? Osric the, tentacles. There's a band from the UK called Osric tentacles. They're like this psychedelic. Right? People compare them to King Crimson. I don't. I don't see the comparison, but they're kind of an alt rock ambient space rock type thing and i think they're good and they've got 20 something albums out and it, they're worth investigating but it drives rob insane but guess what rob's not here today he's so, watching though <laughs> bingo bingo osric <laughs> tentacles yo two things that two things i always tell people osric tentacles are, are a mixture of king crimson with with craft work um that's kind of how i describe them to people they're just so mm. weird and, and, Get, get, try and put those two together. You can't do it, right? Yeah, but that's weirdly cool. It's and and great musicians. So, anyway, but that's that's how we do it. We go uh, metal will prevail, and you can do your hands and do whatever and you want. Your, there's your unreadable logo up in the corner now. You yes. see it up there? Unreadable, unreadable logo. Unreadable logo. Yes. Yeah. The metal round table. It actually says that, and it in the unreadable just, in the unreadable black metal I, logo. I literally. I was so we were so late. I literally just grabbed anything out of a cabinet and was getting dressed as I was running down the hall from the bedroom. So I'm sorry it's not unreadable. But then somebody said I gotta have one of those shirts. I was Tony Clem, did. I think early on. I don't know if you're familiar with Rotting Corpse. In fact, I think they might have actually opened one of the Joe's Garage shows. I I don't man. It's been so long ago, and that was a that would have been back in '90 maybe. Anyway, that's a whole other show. So All right. that's how we so do our outro. So let's ready? do our outro then. Yep. Go okay. for it. Ready? One, oh, two, three. Oh, yes, you. Oh, 
So uh, I'm Carcass John, and for there our special guest Ronnie Reinhardt and Harmless Rebel Stevo and the masterful Scott Raging Waters. Figured it out. So <laughs> long till next week. Hey, hey, and next week, just so you know, it's episode one five zero. It's one fifty, and it just happens to be somebody's birthday. And I'm a lot older than Ron Reinhardt. I'm just telling, I'm putting it out there. Yeah, what? I'm. I'm I'm way older than you. I was yes, in kinder I might I might have actually been in kindergarten when you were born, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but so for all all of us here, it was a great show. I'm glad even though we started late that we're gonna do it. But metal metal will prevail. Yeah. And I'll leave you guys hanging. Yeah, <laughs>